This is a science story of autophagy and fat deposits within our cells. In this content, I'll be presenting data to you that shows how increases in blood fats lead to changes in our cells that affect our mitochondria and potentially our sensitivity to insulin. Let's get into the cellular workings. Learn Your Body, a science-based education. This piece is based on a study that I presented parts in a previous piece of content, but you can find that initial content along with the study and my notes and follow-up amendments attached to this content for you. Briefly, to describe the study design for those of you that didn't see the first content, the study was designed in such a way that the researchers recruited 19 healthy, semi-active individuals. These individuals were either given a 12-hour blood infusion of largely unsaturated fat, or saline, so no fat. Participants then had muscle tissue taken, which was probed for a variety of mitochondrial measures, autophagy markers, as well as insulin sensitivity. The researchers then compared the results of the fat infusion against the saline infusion. Now, looking at a bit of the data, the researchers took images to look within the cells and found that mitochondria within the cells are associated with greater lipid droplets as well. Lipid droplets are just as they sound, subcellular sacs of fat deposits. Now, not only that, the researchers found more autophagy vesicles in the cells of the participants with the fat infusion. An autophagy vesicle is a sac that envelops pieces within the cell and prepares them for destruction. So presumably this would imply more autophagy. Adding credence to this thought process, the researchers also found elevated levels of the protein pink. Pink, apart from its funny name, uh, is a protein that is on the mitochondrial outer membrane. And when active, it tags other proteins on the mitochondria, which recruits autophagy vesicles to that mitochondrion to envelop it and destroy it. So taken together, this might imply more destruction of mitochondria by autophagy. However, as mentioned in previous content, the overall mitochondrial content was not diminished between the fat infusion and saline infusion participants. We'll address that shortly. First, let's look at insulin sensitivity. The researchers looked at how the body cells reacted to infusions of insulin along with the infusion of the lipids or fats by testing the insulin sensitivity of the tissues of the body. They found that the fat infusion led to a reduction in insulin sensitivity. So taken together, this all implies that cells accumulate fatty deposits from a long-term exposure to fat in the bloodstream. It also implies the beginning of autophagy inside the cells for, well, likely the removal of mitochondria. Now to speak to this, the researchers need more measures to confirm this. What are considered electron micrograph images to visualize autophagy vesicles plus one measure of elevated pink protein is insufficient to prove autophagy of mitochondria outright. However, if this line of evidence stands in future experiments, this could be the beginning of reducing mitochondrial content in the cells, which is often found in obese and diabetic patients. So while mitochondrial content may be normal over a 12 hour infusion, if the experiments had run for days, the researchers may start seeing reductions in mitochondrial content, a marker of pathology. This paired with preliminarily reduced insulin sensitivity measures implies high fat in the bloodstream triggers changes in the cells that are likely unwanted, but more experiments and longer experiments are needed to be sure. With that, I certainly hope that this proved informative and I hope to have the pleasure of speaking with you in the near future. Bye.